One toast box a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, please, please. Uh, I don't mind like 21 cups per month. Congratulations to parents who has managed to get their kids into primary school of their choice in the most recent registration exercise. Now, my daughter also participated in this particular exercise, but unfortunately, we didn't get into our first choice of school. Lah. Okay, okay, I know for disclaimer, all schools are good schools. Yes, but some schools are better than others. Now, this is the reality whether you believe it or not. And in today's episode of Pocket View Insights, schools is what we are going to be talking about. And for the benefit of those parents who want to be tiger moms and dads are, are, are not quite sure how the system works, how the different phases of registrations are, and how buying a property within sought after schools will offer you a strong safety net, this video should help you a great deal. Now, let's call this video today Singapore Primary School for Dummies. For a start, my wife and myself are quite the school people. We came from neighborhood primary schools ourselves, but our philosophy has been quite simple. If we can provide the best for our kids within our means, we will do just that. Whether they can study or not, at least we try to put them in the best position to fulfill the potential. I get it that qualifications these days are not everything, but that is really like the most politically correct answer here in Singapore because Singapore, a strong educational background will definitely give you a stronger head start. Don't own self cheat own self. Uh. That is unfortunately the harsh reality. What? What the f So in total, there are five phases to the registration exercises for primary school. Now, first phase, we call it phase one, or I would like to say the most boring phase. This one is very simple. If you have a child who has a sibling currently studying in a particular school, confirm going straight away. No sweat. Now you see how, why that is boring, right? So, second phase, phase 2A. Now, this is what we call the prelude to a boxing event. This phase is applicable for the following. Number one, parent or sibling who is a former student of the school. This one, a lot of them. Okay, number two, parent who is a member of the school advisory or management committee. This one, not so much. Number three, parent who is a staff member of the school. This one, also not much. Right? And number four, MOE kindergarten under the purview of and located within the primary school itself. This one I never hear before. At least for the top schools, uh, they are concerned. This phase uh, used to be almost a guaranteed thing for parents who were alumni of the school. But in 2022, MOE uh, made the decision to allocate extra 20 slots from this phase to phase 2C, which I'll cover in a bit. So it was only from then that we start to get balloting for this phase as the applicant outnumbers the vacancies. So how does the balloting work for this phase? Very simple. By distance based on the address reflected on your NRIC. If you're under 1km, of course, you still have a better chance. If you are living between 1 to 2km, then usually still quite okay. But for the top schools, there's usually balloting for parents residing beyond 2km. Example, let me pull out the stats from Nanyang Primary School for you to better understand courtesy of sgschooling.com. 149 vacancy, 171 applications. Over subscribe. Now, what does this SC more than 2 means? It means that there was a balloting exercise for those who are living beyond 2km of the school and that everyone living within the 2km uh, all don't need ballot. Confirm go in. So, you know how important schools are when it comes to property investment, right? So what if you see this? SC within 1 to 2 means there is balloting for those living between 1 to 2 km. Quite obvious, right? But it also means that those staying beyond 2 km automatically cannot even go in. Not even part of balloting process. And that all those within 1 km also don't need ballot. Why? Because confirm go in. Uh. Oh, so quite straightforward, right? But what if you see this, which is the worst? SC under 1. It means every applicant living within 1KM also got to ballot. And those beyond 1KM how? Confirm won't even go in. Should we go to the next phase already? Won't even get a chance to ballot. 
And one more very important thing to take note, so long as there's a balloting exercise, regardless whether you're phase 2A, B, C, F, Z, Y, you want to call it, there is a minimum stay of 30 months from the successful registration of your child into the school. Now, this 30 months is not from primary one, and it's also not 30 months uh, prior to the registration exercise. Uh, I got some donkey fans or people I know uh, who thought that you need to stay in there for 30 months before being able to even register. Okay, so this 30 months is usually from registration, which is typically between July to August, meaning that you should be living in the premises close to the end of like maybe primary two or start of primary three. So I repeat again, uh, if you're living within 1km and you went in without needing to ballot or participate in the balloting but that particular phase you are in has balloting done for let's say parents living outside 2km you still have to stay in the property for 30 months so long as there's any form of balloting in that particular phase confirm must stay 30 months now this one a lot of people are not aware of confirm shop okay now can you switch address halfway to something else can but still must be within the distance that you were in during the exercise ah. If you are within 1km, you must stay within 1km. If you are within 2km, also you must stay within 2km. You can choose to stay even closer lah, but just cannot exceed the 2km. Huh? Quite easy ah, to understand. So now with the distance thing explained, let's move on to the third phase, phase 2B. This is almost the main course already. Now this phase, number one, if you are either a parent volunteer to the school during a stipulated period, Number two, you are a member endorsed by a church or clan directly connected with the primary school, like how the Hokkien Hui Kua works for Chinese schools like Ai Tong, Kong Hua, and so and so forth, or how church people apply for schools like ACS. And finally, number three, you're endorsed as an active grassroots leader. Now, for grassroots leader, usually you need to serve the community for I think somewhere around at least two and a half years. Quite quite shag. Uh. For this and the church or clan group people, right? or parents, remember you are required to email the school of your choice, your grassroots or church endorsement letters during the registration exercise. Please don't forget this, okay? And uh, it is in this phase that uh, you didn't get in. Uh, very sad. Quack, 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 quack. You know, uh, in that year that my child was born, it was record low birth rate. So in our mind, uh, we were thinking like, oh, confirm going one, no, no problem one. Uh, but in the end, uh, Record high application over vacancies. Never seen before number, you know? I don't want to say what school it is, but that school is like close to three times over subscribed, like 20 slots and like what 60 applicants. Now enough of me, let's move on. I always believe if life gives you lemons, then you make lemon tea out of it. Lah. 21 cups per month. Okay, fourth phase. This one is the main cost. There is no requirements for this exercise. You can stay somewhere in the west to apply for school in the east or you can stay in the east to apply for something in the west. Doesn't matter. But uh, this is the exercise commonly known as the distance decider. Now whether you stay within 1km or not or if you are outside 2km because if I were to talk about the top schools almost all of them has balloting for those that are living within 1km. Let me show you one example of one of the craziest tests for Phase 2C. It's not Nanyang, it's not Nanhua, it's not Aitong, it's not all Taonan or whatever Chinese school. It is Princess Elizabeth Primary School. Now, I bet you all didn't know where this school is, right? Because to be honest, I still don't know where this school is until I started analyzing the numbers. 48 slots up for grabs, 283 applicants. Leh. Can you imagine balloting for SC staying, staying within 1km? Exactly how many of these 283 applicants are living within 1km? I don't know, but there's definitely more than 48 that are within 1km. That's why there's, you know, those above 1km are confirmed no chance. Ah. Damn shack. Ah. This is like five times oversubscribed. No? Any parents with kids studying this school, can you please put in the comment why this school is so hot? Lah? Is it because there's some secret or some, some method of teaching there that everyone doesn't know? Or is it because Bukit Gombak got not much schools? Please, please, please put in your comment. So by the time this phase concludes, the top schools will have no more slots left for the final phase of Phase 2 CS. Usually from what I notice is that those parents who failed to register their kids for schools around, let's say, Nanyang or those up in the Bukit Timah like MGS or Peihua usually they'll get posted to Bukit Timah Primary School in Phase 2 CS or those who tried for the ACS or SGI in the Yuna but failed to get in will probably go to Farrah Park Primary School 
In summary, if you are a grassroots leader, clan or church member who lives within the 1KM of the school you are trying to get in, you are effectively given two chances to get into the school of your choice. Phase 2B and Phase 2C. Now, if you are just staying within 1KM, you get only one chance in Phase 2C. That's why parents tend to do volunteer on many levels to increase their chances of getting a shot at the school they wish to put their kids in. Now, two chance or one chance to decide. With that, now you know how important the presence of top school will do for property prices within that vicinity, right? Like I always talk about schools in my QP framework. It is always good to have them, but if the area is not popular for schools like, mm, let's say, Passeries or Tampanese or even Woodlands, then no school is okay. La. But if you start to go to neighborhoods that are famous for what I call the school belt in the Bukit Dima area, then the 1km distance is very, very important. There are certain boundaries in Bukit Dima that has no top schools within a 1km radius. You'll be very surprised. And their rents and visibility uh, tends to lag back quite a bit. Or let's talk about the East Coast. The most obvious Chinese school that everyone wants to go in would be Tao Nan. Uh. And given Tao Nan 1km radius has quite some bit of lander and HDB, the lack of condo ensures that the rents are always very strong and the inquiries to purchase property is also so much higher than other parts of the East. Because parents tend to search for properties online using the filters that narrows down the search to the 1km radius. So just think about it, if you rent out or want to sell something, every year you have an additional pool of tenants and buyers looking at your property. Now when that happens, you think your price will stay strong? Of course lah, there are really a lot of Kiasu parents out there one I tell you. Now if you're not sure how to plan out your property purchases with your kids school in mind, you can always reach out to me via WhatsApp or my number below. You can see how we can balance between both without compromising on your property value or your kids education because why I have been doing just that for the past six years. So for parents out there who are like me, always remember to have a backup plan just in case you don't get into your preferred school. We cannot go into the situation full of optimism, uh, thinking in a positive manner. I mean, it's good to be positive uh, that, oh, I will get in, I will get in, I will get in. The stats are not so kind, I can tell you that. Because if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. 